Welcome to the series of um, tutorials about the course organizational theory and behavior. Uh, this tutorial is particularly uh, focusing on the second chapter of the course, uh, which is entitled as organizational behavior. Uh, previously, I have uploaded a um, tutorial about the first chapter, uh, which uh, you know deals uh, more of about um, the concepts and um, the uh, notions of um, organization and uh, we have seen the definitions of organization the characteristics of organizations uh, the principles and uh, different issues uh, that are related with uh, organizations and in this course organizational theory and behavior we are talking about organizations um, of any kind and any size, uh, they could be a government organizations, um, non-government organizations, private organizations, mm, and they can be of a small size, medium size, or large size. The size and the kind of organizations um, um, doesn't matter. And in this uh, chapter, uh, chapter two, we will be looking into. Uh, organizational behavior. Organizational behavior is um, um, the branch of um, the study of uh, organizational theory and uh, behavior, and it has, um, you know, purposive uh, concepts. And uh, we start right from uh, defining the term uh, organizational behavior, and then we look into uh, different issues related to organizational behavior. To start with, let us uh, define the um, uh, what is organizational behavior. Organizational behavior is a study of how individuals and groups behave within an organization and how those behaviors affect the overall performance of the organization. Hence, it is about the behavior of individuals, the behavior of groups in the organization. Okay. Uh, organizations uh, once established in order to function they need to um, hire individuals individual professionals and managers and uh, those um, you know personnel with different um, uh, professional backgrounds in order to put uh, the blueprint okay the plan this you know the annual plans and the strategic plans of um, the organization so that the organization could fulfill it is um, potential or activities call okay there um, need to be individuals individual employees and uh, those individual employees um, on individual base and um, on group base behave uh, in some ways and uh, the way that individual employees and group group of employees uh, could behave in the uh, organization uh, affects the performance of the organization Okay, the way that um, individual employees and group is behaving the organization, you know, uh, um, either affect the organization positively or negatively. That is why the organizational behavior is the study of individuals and group behavior in the organization and how uh, those behaviors affect the overall performance of the organization. Another definition. Organizational behavior is the examination of how people interact within organizations with a particular focus on the behaviors and attitudes of individuals and groups. So it also studies, okay, it, you know, it, it, it deals with how people interact, how people um, relate with each other in the organization, how individuals relate, interact, how groups relate, interact with each other by, uh, you know, by delving into a particular uh, issues of behaviors and attitudes of the individual employees and groups of groups of employees. Organizational behavior is an analysis of how organizational structures, process, and cultures impact human behavior in workplace setting. Um, in this um, I in this sense, organizational behavior is also concerned about how uh, the organization, the nature of the organization, it is establishment, okay, it is uh, structures and the work processes as well as um, culture evolved in the organization affects human behavior. How um, the 
question is how the organization, the nature of the organization in practice influences human behavior, how it makes the, uh, the um, employees to act or to behave in some way or in another way. Um, organizational behavior is a study of how employees interact with their environment to achieve organizational goals and and objectives. Organizations, um, you know, organizations, um, you know, do not function in vacuum. Okay, they function in environment. They are sur surrounded by um, the environment, and uh, you know, employees. Okay, who are working in the organization need to interact with um, the environment. And the way that the employees uh, interact with the environment affect the uh, workplace setting, uh, the um, you know the performance of the organization or the commitment of uh, the employees, uh, uh, like that. And uh, this also falls once again under the uh, scope of organizational behavior and uh, organizational behavior studies of how um, studies how um, employees interact relate with their environment achieve organizational goals and objectives. Um, organizational behavior can also be defined as um, actions, attitudes, and values of individuals and groups within an organization and how they impact its success or failure. Okay? Therefore, it is uh, all about the actions, attitudes, and values of individuals or groups, individual employees, or um, a group of employees within an organization, and you know how they influence the success and the failure of uh, the organization. And uh, there are many um, many areas, okay, many issues that uh, falls under the uh, concern of organizational behavior, and this includes um, motivation, leader behavior, and power, interpersonal communication. Um, group structure and process, learning, attitude development and perception, change process, teamwork, conflict, job design, and work stress. Those are the uh, concerns, the, the issues that fall under the coverage of organizational behavior. And um, in the later part of the course, we will be looking um, more into uh, each of them in one way or in another way. Organizational behavior represents the human side of the element, not the whole uh, of management. Therefore, organizational behavior um, represents the human element, okay, the human element of management. It represents the human side of management, dealing with um, uh, the uh, human resource, dealing with human resource, dealing with individual employees and group of employees, how they behave, how they act, how they interact in the organization. It, you know, is um, the concern of organizational behavior, and organizational behavior just focuses on that uh, human side of management, not the whole um, uh, management endeavor. Okay. Um, organizational behavior does not intend to portray the whole of management. Okay. It doesn't uh, represent the whole management um, activity. It just concerns about the human management okay, or the uh, human side, uh, uh, you know, with a special focus on uh, the behavior, the attitude and uh, the interaction, the relationship uh, between and among the employees in the organization. Um, it is just one of the many areas that fall under the umbrella of management. Therefore, it is one of uh, the branch of management, not uh, the whole management, and is closely related to other areas such as human resource management, organizational theory, and uh, social psychology. Okay. It is j just a branch of management that deals about the behavior, the attitude, and um, the actus of employees and um, a group of employees in, in, in an organization. It doesn't represent the whole of management endeavors because uh, management is a perversive concept that included, includes within, within itself uh, many issues, and uh, among those issues is um, you know, organizational behavior.
um, organizational behavior is not only relevant to managers but also uh, to employees at all levels of an organization. It helps individuals understand how to work effectively with others and how to contribute to the success of the organization. Therefore, in a, in, in a particular organization, whether it is um, governmental, uh, non-governmental or private, any, any kind, whether it is large or uh, small or small or um, you know, medium-sized organization, it doesn't matter. But in any organization, the uh, concern of organizational behavior, the concern uh, of um, the behaviors of the employees and group of employees uh, is not just a concern of for managers. It's not just a concern of for managers, but it concerns um, all employees at all levels of the organization. Okay, uh, therefore, every individual, every employee in the organization, need to understand um, organizational behavior, and uh, it, it will help. Okay, the employees to understand how to work effectively with others, how to interact with others for purpose, for the sake of fulfilling organizational goals and objectives, and how the employees will contribute to the success of the organization. After all, organize, you know, employees in the organization, uh, once they are employed, they are there in the organization to help the organization to succeed. And uh, understanding organizational behavior um, by every individual, every individual employee in the organization um, would enable each and every employee to understand um, the organization and uh, then uh, work to work on how to contribute to the organization um, organization success. So organizational behavior is you know it is a field of um, a field of study. A field of study that that uh, falls under the uh, scope of management, and it has its own evolutionary um, development history, evolutionary development history that it has evolved over time. It has evolved over time um, to arrive at uh, in uh, you know at its today's status today in the m this modern world. Um, organizational behavior um, is practiced, uh, is being studied uh, by uh, the, those who are working in relation to organization and organizational development. And um, let us look uh, just into, um, just lightly into the process, uh, the evolution of organizational behavior as a field of study or as a branch of management. Um, organizational behavior has a rich historical background that can be traced back to the early pioneers of management. The roots of um, organizational behavior can be traced back to the early 1900s, when scientific management was first introduced by uh, Frederick uh, Winslow Tyler. Frederick Tyler, it was you know the formal, the formal roots of organizational behavior can be tra traced back to 1900 informally and um, while it was incorporated into uh, different uh, field of studies okay its history could be um, traced back into um, the 19th century into 19th century but it was uh, not just as an independent uh, field of study but incorporated within other field of studies and uh, but formally, but formally, um, it is history can be traced back to um, 1900s with the work of um, uh, Frederick Tyler, uh, which is uh, notably uh, named as scientific management uh, uh, theory. And we will be looking uh, deeply to into uh, the scientific management of Frederick Tyler in the later part of uh, this course. Tyler's idea emphasized the need for scientific methods to improve efficiency and productivity in the workplace. He was more concerned about uh, how to systematically improve efficiency and uh, productivity in the workplace. 
uh, his concept of one best way aimed to find the most efficient method of work for each uh, task. The belief uh, of um, the tellers, uh, Frederick Taylor's work was that uh, there is a uh, one best way that organizations uh, need to master uh, in order to uh, efficiently uh, and pro you know efficiently and effectively um, perform work, okay, and uh, thereby increase um, uh, productivity in the workplace. In the early 20th century, the Hawthorne studies began to challenge Taylor's idea, okay, uh, and um, mind you. The work of um, Frederick Winslow Tyler was in 1900s and uh, he uh, came up with um, scientific management theory okay, to improve um, the productivity, the efficiency and the effectiveness in, uh, in organizations. But um, uh, in the early 1920s, the Hawthorne studies began to challenge Taylor's idea uh, the studies were conducted by Ilton Mayo and his colleagues at the Hawthorne Works of Western Electric Company in Chicago. And th 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 the findings of um, the Ilton Mayo and his uh, colleagues' um, uh, study uh, start to challenge the, um, the ideas established by uh, Frederick Winslow Tyler. Ilton uh, uh, Mayo and his colleagues found that changes in employee behavior and productivity were not solely due to physical or technical factors but also due to uh, social factors such as group dynamics, supervision and communication. The argument, the argument is that um, human behavior, okay, human behavior, um, employee behavior, okay, specifically, and productivity, okay, productivity in a particular organization is not just due to physical or technical factors it's not just due to um, the you know the technical knowledge okay technical knowledge or the uh, physical presence of employees but social factors also impact the employees and the productivity in a particular uh, organization uh, for example group dynamics supervision and uh, communication are among uh, the factors uh, that influences human uh, employee behavior and productivity according to um, Ilton May and his colleagues finding. Um, the human relations management emerged in 1920s and 1930s was a response to the finding of the Hawthorne studies and following the, the recent findings of Ilton May and his colleagues, the findings of the Hawthorne studies um, human relation management, uh, human relations movement, I mean, human relation theory uh, emerged. Okay, and uh, we will be looking more into um, human relations um, uh, theory in uh, the subsequent chapter of the course. Uh, this movement, uh, human relations movement, emphasized the importance of interpersonal relationships, motivation, job satisfaction, and the leadership in the workplace. Instead of just uh, focusing on physical and technical factors, uh, this uh, human relation uh, movement or human relation theory put a greater emphasis on interpersonal relations, on social factors, social factors such as um, interpersonal relations, motivation, job satisfaction, and the leadership in the workplace. The argument here is that the social factors are important. The human relations approach considered employees as social beings who were motivated not just by pay but also by social relationships and sense a sense of belonging okay therefore you know it stresses that employees could be influenced by social relationships and a sense of belongingness a sense of attachment to the organization, okay? a sense of sticking oneself to the organization, identifying oneself with the organization, not just um, motivated by uh, you know the 
payment, the salary that is being paid to um, to, in, to employees. Yeah, because um, employees are social beings, social beings, and social relations, social interactions matter. Okay. Organizational behavior at the field of study has developed and evolved over time. Okay, since um, uh, its informal and formal um, emergence as a field of study, it uh, keep on thriving. It keep on evolving over time. Uh, it emerged as a distinct field of study in the 1940s, and has continued to expand and evolve since then. Okay, as a field of study. The field of study and, and now organizational behavior is being given even as a um, as a department in in different uh, throughout different um, uh, universities and uh, it is a distinct field of study and as a distinct field of study um, it emerged in 1940s and continued to expand and evolve uh, since then and, and if until today it is thriving and uh, well, you know that uh, trend will continue even at times in the future. In 1950s and 1960s, uh, research on uh, organizational behavior focused on, s uh, on areas such as motivation, leadership, communication, and job satisfaction in 1950s and 1960s. Theories such as um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, Harrisburg's two-factor theory, and McGregor's uh, theory X and theory Y were developed during this time. Okay, therefore, um, as it emerged as a distinct field of study, then uh, many issues were studied within its scope. And in 1970s and 1980s, organizational behavior began to incorporate insights from other fields of study such as uh, sociology, anthropology, and cultural studies. So. It emerged as a distinct field of study in 1940s, and um, in 1950s and 1960s, it was studied from different perspectives within itself. But in 1970s and 1980s, uh, it you know it started to to sand its roots even into um, other fields of study like sociology, anthropology. Uh, it became more of an interdependent field of study and they uh, start to interact with um, other um, field of studies, other disciplines. Research during this time focused on areas such as organizational culture, power dynamics, and the diversity in the workplace. Look, there are many, you know, concerns that fall under even, um, you know, right from 1900. There were, there were many, you know, even the uh, concepts and the notions in the scientific management of uh, Frederick Winslow Tyler and then the um, in the human relation movement. Um, different issues okay, like uh, 1950s um, and 1960s motivation, leadership, communication, job satisfaction, all tests are false under the concern of um, organizational behavior and um, in 1970s and 1980s even it is start to incorporate um, studies okay, rela uh, related to organizational culture, uh, power, uh, power dynamics, and uh, diversity in the workplace. Um, more recently, organizational behavior has become increasingly concerned with the impact of technology on organizations and uh, work environment. Uh, um, we raise it about um, the development of organizational behavior right from uh, 1900 and we come um, uh, through it until 1970s and 1980s and uh, after 1980s till today and the recent time and uh, currently organizational behavior is concerned with the impact of technology because now uh, technology is, um, is, is getting um, spreading from uh, any corner of the world into the functions of, of the organizations. Okay, uh, you know, it's rampant, technology is rampant uh, this time around. And uh, organizational behavior, 
has incorporated the concern of technology uh, into its scope. And uh, now it is more of concerned with the impact of technology on organizations and the work environment because technology is uh, changing the, you know, the foundational landscape of the organizations. And <laughs> today organizations, um, instead of uh, hiring employees, uh, you know, it could, it could hire, you know, robots. Uh, like um, machines that can accelerate the activities uh, within a matter of seconds, within a matter of minutes, um, those works that could have been um, accomplished within months, within um, weeks, they could be accomplished just within a matter of minutes and within a matter of hours. So, you know, th th that is not uh, something that need to be uh, that um, uh, that is overlooked. The, the, you know, from the point of view of organizational behavior, uh, just uh, changes due to technology are not um, um, easy things that that would be left um, uh, unchecked. Rather, organizational behavior has given a huge attention uh, to just uh, changes due to technology, and is more of concerning about uh, the impact of technology on organizational behavior, organizations and uh, work environment at this time. Uh, with the rise of virtual and remote work, as well as uh, the increasing use of artificial intelligence and automation, OB is exploring how those changes are affecting employee behavior, and motivation, and organization. Yeah. Today, employees are now expected to uh, directly go to the workplace every day. Uh, they, w el uh, they would always sit in their um, you know, room and work from their virtual online. Or um, uh, they can be, you know, from the other part of um, uh, the wallet, from the, uh, you know, somewhere in other part, uh, another corner of the wallet, and the work uh, in an organization that is far from them. Okay, you know, it's not mandatory for an employee to be present in in, in the organization to uh, to work. The, and this is this is. Uh, because of uh, the emergency of technology and uh, the advancement of technology, and uh, this might affect the employee behavior, employee motivation, and organizational structure in many ways. It's change to technology, but uh, the changes, you know, are not just uh, positive things. Sometimes um, they they have uh, negations, and organizational behavior uh, this time around focuses on. Uh, focus on um, looking into uh, such a uh, change due to technology. Okay, so you know, organize look how organization uh, organizational behavior as a field of study is thriving today. It is concerned about technology. Okay, in 1950s, 1970s, and 1980s, it was concerned about communication, about motivation, like that. Today, it is about uh, technology. So uh, it, it is. It is it's key is ticking, ticking with time ticking, okay, time advancing, time uh, going forward, and uh, organizational behavior as a field of study is improving, is moving um, along um, with time. Overall, the field of organizational behavior continues to evolve and adapt to changing social, economic, and technological conditions. Okay, the changes. Um, continue to happen in social arena, in economic arena, in technological arena, in political arena, in cultural arena, okay, in different uh, fields, in different um, uh, you know, sectors, and organizational behavior continue to evolve, continue to adapt to such changes with focus on understanding how individuals and groups function within organizations. Another point of discussion um, in this tutorial is characteristics of organizational behavior. There are several characteristics of organizational behavior that are important to understand. Okay, and uh, one of um, the characteristics, okay, uh, as we have said, organizational behavior it is a way of thinking about individuals, uh, groups, and organizations. Okay. The, the another, c it is uh, you know one of the feature. One of the feature of organizational behavior is it is a way of thinking about individuals, groups, and organizations. There are organizations in place, and within organizations, 
um, there are individuals and groups okay a group you know individual employees and uh, when they come together the individual individuals collectively can form uh, small groups large groups uh, depending upon the size of the organization and uh, the number of employees existing in the organization um, they could form groups so organizational behavior uh, one of the feature of organizational uh, behavior is that um, it is a way of thinking about individuals groups and organizations another um, characteristic is multidisciplinarity okay organizational behavior is a multidisciplinary field obi is a multidisciplinary field strong on insights and theories from psychology sociology anthropology political science and economics and uh, you know the list is are not exhaustive it uses principles models theories and methods from other disciplines okay uh, you know the the basis of organizational behavior as a field of study uh, is now independent of other field of studies. It uses principles, models, theories, and methods from different um, um, uh, disciplines. Um, it's goal oriented. Organizational behavior seeks to understand how individuals and groups work together to achieve uh, their goals and objectives. You know, the ultimate, you know, the ultimate. Um, objective organi of organizational behavior is that is um, how to get best out of individuals how to get best out of groups in the organization okay uh, so that the organizational goals and objectives could be achieved that is why uh, uh, you know it can be it's, it can be characterized as goal oriented okay its interest is to get best out of um, uh, the employees on individual base and also on group base performance oriented it deals with the factors affecting performance and how it can be improved okay the uh, factors affecting human factors hu human behavior factors affecting the um, work performance in the organization and how uh, this um, uh, factors um, could be improved another uh, characteristics is that organizational behavior is systematic systematic organizational behavior aims to develop systematic approach to understand and managing people in organizations the use of scientific method is important in studying variables and relationships um, when we say organizational behavior is systematic we mean that it is according to an organized way of working um, uh, you know active you know executing activities okay when we say systematic it is organized based on plan okay based on plan orchestrated okay not uh, not arbitrary or not random okay therefore when um, organizational behavior deals about human behavior mm, like individuals um, individual employees behavior and a uh, group's behavior I, it's not in random or it's not in arbitrary way rather um, uh, in accordance with plans in accordance with um, orchestrated um, you know steps okay predetermined steps okay it is in orderly manner okay in organized and orderly manner Okay. Uh, the importance of systematic approach. Why systematic approach is very important? Why organized approach is important? Step by step, it, you know, step by step approach uh, is important in organizational behavior. Is that casual or common sense approach to obtaining knowledge about human behavior are inadequate. Okay. Um, casual in the sense, okay, uh, arbitrary arbitrary or um, you know uh, like uh, habitual something habitual based on experience based on common sense common sense approaches or experience based approaches okay Ap you know applying techniques 
based just on experiences, on what we use it to do, is not adequate. Okay, is not adequate. Is uh, you know those things are inadequate. So, uh, you know, instead of casual or common sense, instead of just uh, depending on um, um, on experiences, okay, on long lived experiences, it's it's necessary to adopt systematic approach that is innovative, that is um, th that is responsive to change, okay, that is responsive to change, and that can adapt to changing situations. Underlying this system approach is the belief that behavior is not random. Behavior is not random. Behavior is, you know, is systematic. Okay, behavior is not random. Behavior is not, uh, you know, arbitrary. Rather, it is systematic. That is why um, systematic approach is important in dealing with organizational behavior. It is caused and directed towards some end that the individual believes, rightly or wrongly, is in his or her best interest. It's clear. When we use a phrase systematic study, we mean looking at relationships, attempting to attribute causes and effects, basing our conclusions on scientific evidence, that is, on data gathered under controlled conditions and measured and interpreted in a reasonably rigorous manner. So when we say systematic, um, then it means that um, a relationship between different variables uh, would be seen, cause and effect um, would be identified, okay, and conclusions uh, will, would be based on, uh, on scientific evidence. Okay. And uh, to, toward that, uh, data needs to be collected in, in, in a controlled uh, manner and interpreted reasonably okay, and logically. It brings substantive evidences, tangible evidences, research, research findings to, understanding, to understand individual and group behavior in the organization. <coughs> Systematic study replaces intuition. Just... Um, Systematic study is uh, in an organization. Okay, systematic study uh, toward its organizational behavior um, replaces intuition. Intuition, in, in a sense, just s you know, a thing that um, could be done with just sensation. It's just sensation. Unplanned, random, just by chance or due to, you know, temporary um, occasions, okay? Temporary feelings. Instead of temporary feelings, systematic um, uh, approach uh, adopts scientific process, step-by-step, -step, orderly, and organized manner. Uh, another characteristic is humanistic. Organizational behavior is the importance of treating employees as human beings, recognizing their needs, interests, and motivations. People and their attitudes, perceptions, learning capacities, feeling, feelings, and goals are of major importance. It's, as we have said uh, at the outset, a human behavior, you know, organizational behavior is the human side of management. So, uh, uh, one of the characteristics, its characteristics, is humans, humanistic. It considers employees. Uh, not as machines, but as human beings. Integrated. Organizational behavior seeks to integrate various perspectives and areas of knowledge into a coherent understanding of organizational behavior. Okay, as we have said, organizational behavior um, uh, you know, has borrowed uh, its concepts from different fields of disciplines and synthesized it into uh, a distinct field of study. So, uh, it is integrated, means it is... Um, um, it's interrelated with a different field of uh, knowledge. It is application oriented in the sense of being concerned with providing useful answers to the questions uh, which arise when a managing organization. It is sometimes um, uh, applied, uh, applied 
approach applied approach in a sense uh, it gives answers for immediate problems facing uh, the organization this characteristics provide a foundation for understanding the complex dynamics of organizational behavior and can help managers make informed decisions about how to manage their employees and organizations more effectively the characteristics that we have seen a best are uh, important and are um, you know base for understanding uh, organizational behavior and also uh, equip managers to uh, make informed decisions about how to manage their employees and organizations more effectively and in a such a way that the organizations could uh, fulfill uh, their very mission uh, vision and missions behavioral aspects of organization the behavioral aspects of um, organizations refers to the human elements that affect the functioning and the performance of an organization the behavioral aspect okay refers to the human element that affect the um, functioning and the performance of an organization this element include attitude P when we say behavioral aspect is um, it could be attitudes behaviors and interactions of individuals within the organization as well as the culture norms and the values that define the organization's identity one important aspect of the organizational behavior is motivation. Motivation refers to the drive that employees have to put in their best effort to achieve organizational goals. When we say uh, motivation, it is um, an energy, okay, it is internal energy that, you know, that drives the employee, okay, that drives the employee, that initiates the employee that inspired the employee to put their best effort to, to achieve organizational goals. It is the process by which individuals are energized, directed, and sustained in their efforts to achieve organizational goals. Managers must understand the various factors that motivate employees, including both internal and external. Okay, internal like personal satisfaction and external like rewards and recognition. Therefore, uh, managers need to understand what motivated their employees from internal perspective, external perspective. If employees are not motivated, then they wouldn't be committed for the organization. They wouldn't align themselves with the organizational um, goals and objectives, and it would be very difficult for the organization um, that has employees uh, um, you know not motivated employees to be successful understanding what motiv motivates employees is important for organizations to provide incentives and rewards that encourage productivity and job satisfaction clear uh, another aspect of organizational behavior is communication communication effective communication is essential for information exchange communication is basically about exchanging information between and or among employees, between and or among departments, work units in the organization. And effective communication is essential, it's necessary for information exchange, conflict resolution, and decision making within organizations. It involves sending clear and concise messages and actively listening to feedback. Okay? No, you know, non-confusing information need to, non-confusing messages need to flow smoothly, upward and downward, throughout different work units, among employees and managers. Okay. Managers must be skilled at communicating clearly and effectively with employees at all levels of the organization, as well as th with their external stakeholders. It is uh, if and only if employees are successful, uh, if successful at, at communication that organizations um, could fulfill their, um, their potential. Um, organizational culture is also another important aspect of organizational behavior. Culture refers to the sh shared values, beliefs, and assumptions that shape 
the behavior and attitudes of individuals within an organization. Okay, when we say culture, it is you know values, beliefs, and assumptions that are shared that are um, extant in a particular organization. And organizational culture uh, can be um, therefore defined as the shared values, beliefs, and assumptions that guide how people behave within an organization. It is set of norms and customs that define the social and psychological environment of an organization, creating a unique identity that distinguishes it from other groups or from other organizations. Therefore, a particular country, a particular organization's culture identifies it from other um, organizations, the rest of organizations. An organization's culture is important because it shapes the behavior of its employees and influence their attitude towards work, toward work and towards each other. A strong organizational culture can help to attract and retain employees uh, who share its values and beliefs which in turn can lead to improved productivity and satisfaction. When the organization has a positive organizational culture, a strong organizational culture, then um, it's possible for that organization to attract new um, clever employees and able to retain uh, the already experienced and clever employees within itself. So, so a strong organizational culture is, is necessary and the presence of a strong organizational culture um, can um, improve positively improve productivity and job satisfaction of employees. It can also facilitate communication and collaboration within the organization, leading to greater efficiency and effectiveness in achieving the organization's goals. A positive work culture okay, can lead to increased job satisfaction, motivation, and retention, while negative culture can contribute to low morale and high trauma. A weak or negative organizational culture can lead to disengaged employees high turnover rates and poor performance. So um, when there is um, a negative uh, organizational culture that um, you know, employees will feel um, you know, detached from their employees, uh, they, they, they would use the organization just as a transition to, uh, into another good organization so that the organization's um, uh, you know, objectives and goals uh, couldn't be achieved in a way that it should. Uh, so then employee turnover will be high and poor of organizational performance and poor employee and group of employees performance uh, would be the sign of uh, a negative organizational culture in any organization. Therefore, it's important for organizations to actively cultivate a positive culture that aligns with their values and goals. That is a good prescri prescription. Moreover, leadership is an important aspect of organizational behavior. Leadership refers to the process of influencing individuals or groups towards achieving a common goal. Okay. Leadership, it's obvious, it's meaning. It's about influencing people, influencing group of people to work, to commit themselves. Okay to stick them th th themselves with a particular organization so that the organization could achieve its goals, objectives for which it was established. Effective leaders must have strong interpersonal skills, be able to motivate others, and be willing to make difficult situations when necessary. Therefore, effective leaders are those are leaders uh, who have interpersonal skills, communicating with others, can motivate employees, can be exemplars, borders for the, the rest of the organization, uh, organization's employees, I mean. And sometimes, when it's required, I uh, can make difficult decisions. Because risk is sometimes, risk takers, effective leaders are. Leaders play a vital role in shaping organizational behavior through their actions and decisions. Good leaders create a positive work environment, promote employee development, and encourage teamwork. Overall, understanding the behavioral aspect of organizations is essential for managers who seek to create effective teams and achieve organizational goals. By focusing on the areas such as motivation, communication, culture, and leadership, managers can create a positive work environment that fosters innovation and, and success.